Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're going to do our daily technical analysis update of commodities, work our way through the dollar yields, precious metals, and commodities ETFs that I follow. I'll interject my financial opinions as I go through it. And if you need help with anything, check out finding-value.com. Uh, I dive deeper into all these sectors looking for potential investment opportunities. Uh, we do have a uh, coupon code that is active, Mayday coupon code. And there's people asking me, <laughs> um, what if I were to set up a hunter bagger portfolio where a few companies could hunter bag, uh, what would those be? Uh, I will go over those uh, this weekend at the Q&A and give you the mindset in order to do it. Uh, we'll talk about risk reward like we always, we were going to do that anyway with companies and how they shift. But we're also going to look at what are some big winners? Uh, and it's not easy, guys. I'm not going to come out and tell you and guarantee anything. <laughs> it's not easy. We'll go through it. I'll let you guys know what it takes to do it if you are willing to do it. And I'm hoping that I've got over a handful in my portfolio already. Fingers crossed. But we'll dive in here. Let's take a look, guys. Um, DXY. So DXY, we're starting there. Uh, relative strength indicator. The dollar is strong today, guys. It is strong. The momentum is still to the upside. You can see all these green candlesticks. Almost like it's a one-way street. Almost like something is causing this to go up. Kind of weird. I get it. Um, I mean, it's like how many spins on the roulette table do you get green, red, or black uh, in a row? Uh, we've got one little, small little down day, really. That's it out of all this. Uh, but stronger dollar today, up 0.33% or so. Is it coming up here to do a retest or does this have any staying power to keep moving? We don't know that. That's what we're looking for next. We've got the, the yields dropping today. So yields are down a little bit, uh, down 0.4%. This, is a, this could be a flag pattern. Uh, that's just a holding formation where we could eventually break higher. Longer to the curve, we've been coming on down here in the short term, and we have a little bit of a contraction in the candlestick. Curious to see if we're going to try to turn here or if we can turn on the jets and head lower. Um, I do think that I find it hard to believe that people are piling in the 10-year bond and 30-year bond, but it is down in terms of yields. So they, they pile into things when yields drop. And then the 30 years also down. But again, it's not a huge follow through candlestick on either one of those. A huge follow through candlestick is a big guy that, that sells off with momentum. It's got some, some balls behind it, you know? This thing, it's got a little wick at the bottom, and the and the opening and closing price are pretty, pretty thin. The momentum is still to the downside. I'm not saying it isn't, but it's not a huge follow through candlestick. A follow through candlestick looks something like that which generally carries you lower. Uh, so we'll see what happens here. Uh, TYX, TNX ratio, slightly lower. So the curve inverted to some degree. It inverted doing it with yields coming down. But again, we've got a long runway ahead of us for yields to uninvert, uh, the yield curve to fall if a recession comes, uh, and gold and silver to run. Now, here's a thing that, that people might bring up. What if it doesn't fall? What if gold goes up and yields continue to go higher? Well, that might mean something really bad for our currency and yields and bond markets. <laughs> that, that, that could be like an end game scenario. Uh, and maybe that's playing out already. How do, why, would I, why would I say something like that? We'll, we'll get into it here. Uh, bond prices are up a little bit. So yields down, bond prices are up, and it still looks okay for a potential bounce. We're up against a lot of support. Uh, and again, yields down, bond prices up. That's how it works. The two-year and 10-year, we inverted a little bit today. Uh, just a teeny bit. Remember, the curve fell. Uh, we're still coming on down from this yield curve uh, inversion here. Momentum is still downward. Uh, and Generally, the curve uninverts when it's anticipating weakness coming in the markets. So people pile into bonds historically, uh, and that's where you get the uninversion of the yield curve. So 
So inflation drives it up. Inflation ceases to exist. People dive into bonds before a potential recession slowdown. That's kind of the, the, the sequence of events. Gold up $12 despite the stronger dollar. We did have yields could pull back. Um, and, and I wouldn't say the conditions were all that favorable for gold, but the gold looks fantastic up here, guys. I mean, this could continue to keep going. It looks good. Silver's up about half a percent. We're getting these wicks at the top, almost like people don't want this to, to move higher. Uh, we're getting selling pressure, selling pressure. Like we are trying to knock on 32.50. You can see the, the wick when we got up there, that reversal of that, uh, of that selling pressure. We go into the short term, there's the reversal there. A whole bunch of selling pressure coming right off that 32, and then we just went sideways thereafter. Um, so kind of kind of interesting how that's how that's moving here. Or uh, silver. So it still looks good, we're still above everything. We've got platinum working its way. We, we got a nice little bullish engulfing. We'll see if we can put in uh, some work here. Uh, start breaking on out and trying to attack the downtrend line. We can get above this downtrend line. The gloves are off, baby. We're ready to roll. <laughs> We're ready to roll. Uh, palladium also up about $17 an ounce. Uh, back to this support region down here. And we are getting a little bit of a bounce today. Uh, GDX up 0.84%, getting a little bit of resistance. You can see the wick at the top there. Uh, GDXJ also up. Uh, but some hit some resistance and SILJ up, but we hit some resistance. A little bit of resistance up there with those wicks. Uh, I still think everything looks good. We're just waiting for gold and silver to put the pedal to the metal. And I think these will also put the pedal to the metal. XAU to gold ratio, we are up about half a percent. And we are still in a tight formation. This formation is what I mean by tight. You can see the lows are starting to come up a little bit. That is something to pay attention to. And we're at an incredibly low level down here where we've got lots of upward mobility is what I'll call it, or a big move in gold and silver mining companies and a huge outperformance against gold if that's what the market wants to shift into, which I think it is, eventually. Crude oil down 0.11%. 0.11%. And I, this is what's weird, guys. We were up double bottom breakout, just like all the other commodities, squeezing into a pattern here. And then all of a sudden, we get that fake news and the big pre market blitz to the downside. And then no follow through, no follow through, which makes me even think that whatever they did was just a short term little blip to get it lower. Because you would see follow through if something was that bad. Uh, and these blips that we see, they just kind of phase, you know, fizzle out. So this doesn't look that bad. And we'll see if we can get some upside momentum generated over the next few trading sessions. TTF, Nat Gas, still up against resistance. You can see we're getting a little bit of selling pressure today. We've got natural gas in America continuing its downward selling pressure move. Um, I would expect it to probably hit this support level. Let me draw a line in here like this. That's where we've got support next, 226-ish. Um, that's probably where we're heading. Well, XOP, yeah, you know me, we are still above support. We got that big selling pressure down day, and we're just chilling today, up 0.77%. Doesn't look too bad, but I'd like to see what occurs next before getting too bullish or bearish in either direction. OIH up about 1.27% recovering from yesterday's uh, raving of the selling pressure yesterday. Uh, this chart does look a little bit weird. Uh, what, what do I mean by that? Well, I mean, look at the short term and how this flows. We've got this big selling pressure move, upward move, big selling pressure move. Now, is this another kind of pattern where we could potentially head lower? Is there further downside pressure? Um, very well could be. Why do I say that? Well, if we get the yield curve to uninvert and, and people's perceptions of the market is that we could see reduced demand, we, I, could, I could easily see a scenario where this could go lower in the short term, if that, if that all plays out like that. Newcastle Coal Futures 
Uh, up against resistance, we're trying to break through, got a little bit of selling pressure today. Uh, we might bounce back a little bit and create another loop. Uh, you hit the, you, you hit it, and then you just do these loops. <laughs> we're looping, but you can see the lows are coming on up. So that is a good thing, and we are trying to break through. Sprout Uranium Trust hitting the gas pedal up towards that resistance level up there. Uh, so we're up about 3.5% there, looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. We've got Uranium Futures pricing that continues to work higher. Uh, we've got a falling wedge that generally breaks on upward with a gigantic lead-in move. So we could very well move uh, up quite a bit. We're seeing massive positioning in the equities of uranium. This is the breakout of the trend line to the upside. Very, very strong. I was talking about yesterday, we're going to give it a go. Uh, yeah, I gave it a go, that's for sure. Uh, so that looks really good. We'll, we might get a little down, bloody nose tomorrow, a little bit of profit taking. Don't worry about it. We've got URNN up 6.5%. It's working towards its resistance line, right underneath it, right at it. Uh, kind of about to try to attack it. And then URNJ hitting the, hitting the boosters up about 7.8% right at its resistance line. So we'll see what occurs there. But good momentum, good strong candlesticks today, good flow um, in uranium. Money flows coming in. And then URNJ versus URNM, it is starting to kick some butt. Your ideal entry point was here. Uh, if you could muster that volatility, uh, it was good even when it was coming back up. Uh, and we got some resistance through there, and we have broken through that. So that looks pretty good for URNJ. Copper up a little bit. Uh, we still have downside momentum, unfortunately, and we'll see if that turns. Uh, COPX up 1.5%. Uh, could be something like a flag, kind of like a flag pattern um, squeezing up where we could break to the upside. So maybe copper is going to turn here soon because uh, the equities don't look that bad. Iron ore up a little bit. That's also squeezing uh, to some degree, looking good. And I think the long term looks really good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then let's see if it can rip. Aluminum right at up against resistance still. Trying to break through. It is flagging to some degree. Um, it's probably a little bit too steep there. I'll probably go sideways a little bit more, but uh, looking like it's trying to put it together a potential break out of this resistance channel. Nickel down a teeny bit, but I am still positive on nickel. It is a flag pennant formation where I think we'll continue higher, and it's probably a double bottom. What would I do? I would get on it, is what I would do, and I would look for nickel companies. Uh, in fact, I have a couple on the website that pay gigantic dividends. That's what I would do. Uh, Moo continuing higher still looks absolutely fantastic. Um, why do I say that? It's the small selling pressure candlesticks, the big move up, the stair step look. Uh, that looks good. Looking for a move higher in uh, Moo, which is the Vanek agribusiness. And this is just a retest here. And what do I do? I buy the retests. Emerging markets up a little bit in the face of a stronger dollar, but we did get weaker yields. Uh, and it, is, it, it does look like we're pulling back a little bit, but not a big selling pressure move. No follow through. Ding, ding, ding. Look for upside. Look for upside eventually. KRE working its way up. It is breaking out of the pattern that I drew a long time ago. We are sitting on top of it. Way to go, KRE. Uh, TAN up a little bit. Momentum still down. Looking like total dog. You fill in the word. Uh, lithium up 0.73%. Momentum still down in lithium. I know there was a company today that was up 20-something percent. Looking good. Feeling good. Uh, but momentum still down. REMX. Oh, man, this is a tough read here. We got lithium going down, but this is going down momentum-wise. We do have a bullish engulfing today. We'll see if we can get some re trend reversal here to the upside. Baltic Dry Index down about 2.65%, struggling a little bit right on support. We'll see if support holds. Uh, XHB continuing its move. Hiya, hiya. Look at this. We've got a little bit of resistance through there, and it is playing with that resistance. Turtle heading out of it, and hopefully it can continue. We've got Russell 2000 looking fantastic. Nice candlesticks. Break out of this downward falling wedge, and we've got the break. 
SPX working its way on up today. Plunge Protection Team was alerted about the bearish engulfing yesterday, and we'll see if we can continue higher despite the bearish engulfing. NASDAQ doing the same thing. We are up today despite this bearish engulfing today, and we'll see what happens. Um, there is a little bit of, I'm seeing a rising wedge going on there. One, two, three, and they're playing with dangerous stuff here. We've got rising wedges over and over and over again. Uh, so, I, I, come on, guys. Unemployment rate, yield curve on inverting, rising wedges, bearish engulfings, all the insiders selling. I mean, let's 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 piece this together, guys. I mean, let's be serious. So look, we'll see what happens here. SMCI up two percent. It is holding on uh, for dear life. Not not difficult read here. It looks like we're going sideways in this channel. I don't see which direction is going to win here yet. Uh, if I were to guess, no, I'm not going to guess. Nvidia up three point one three percent. Big big nasty candlestick there, but uh, the day before. We'll see what occurs. I'm going to hold my judgment until we see what happens here. Uh, Bitcoin up 2%. It is playing and turtle heading out of its pattern here. Could be a big move. Why would that be? Well, I mean, if America's in a debt problem and they are printing money to solve it, maybe Bitcoin is picking up on that liquidity being printed. Uh, this could be a big move, guys. Could be a big move. Why do I say that? Big handle. Big pattern, big moves. <laughs> that's why. Uh, Ethereum up a half a percent too. That still looks good to go higher. Uh, big candlestick, flag pattern, let her rip. So uh, that's what we've got for today, guys. Give me a thumb up for the content. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the website. We've got that Mayday coupon still active. M-A-Y-D-A-Y, one word. 50% off the first month only. Yearly membership. If you like the membership, you can you can go to a yearly membership, save some money. Um, there's a bigger discount there if you want to do that. Uh, we've got a midweek or midweek update is uh, released. You can see that where I share my opinions there. Um, I did not know that some of those companies that I said were good were going to go up as much as they did today. That was pretty ridiculous, uh, but a good thing I guess if you guys are already in it. Um, We've got this weekend coming up, uh, question and answer session Sunday at 5 p.m. So that's a reminder. Uh, we'll go over a lot of stuff there. I know you guys were getting pretty pretty uh, interested in the last Q&A, and we'll continue that uh, into this next one. Uh, but that's what I've got for today, guys. So hopefully you're hanging on to your shares. Hopefully you're a part of the uranium crew that got you know smoked or, or smoked to the upside is what I'll call it. It, it went up quite a bit today. Uh, congratulations to those that have held on. Uh, you're doing well. Uh, those who bailed at the bottom there, I'm sorry. Um, you know, I, there's nothing I can do there. That would have been a good time to buy, not necessarily sell. And hopefully you guys are, are hanging on to your shares. Uh, the oil and gas sector, you know, some of those uh, energy service companies are down right now. And there could be good, good entry points coming up here uh, in some of those. Uh, but this is what I've got. We'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.